Okay, we live. Now I'm live on for a podcast. Begging for a, people been begging for a podcast. Not asking. Folk been begging me to do, you know, some type of podcast set up. So that's what that is here today. And today I'm gonna be talking to y'all about this lady here. And this lady's name is Bella Bone Crusher. Now Bella Bone Crusher is one of them talking about one of the baddest, meanest mean as bad as the women of all time boy this mug right here one nan joke man now you know a lot of these stories i've been telling you know they take place in the early 1920s late 1800s you know 1910s 1860 70 80 90 you know it's a lot of crazy history that went on around that time and this is a time where you know you first started getting like cameras and uh, this is when uh, people start actually taking a lot of pictures of different crazy junk. What up, Cam? How you doing, man? Hope everything good. You know, I'm glad to see y'all. So everybody that come through, y'all hit, you know, just give me a like. That's all I ask. You ain't got to do much. You know, you ain't got to hit the cash app if you ain't got it. If you do got it, hit it. But please give me a like, man. Like button free. So, you know, Miss Miss Bone Crusher here, she grew up. She was, um, you know, grew up in the South on the plantations. Now her family, you know, her family all big strong folk, but they didn't like the fact that she would always get them in trouble. Cause every time somebody would try, she always threw it up for herself. Like she just wasn't the type that was finna, you know, take no mess off somebody. So if you came to see about her, she gonna make sure that you know you are. <laughs> You ain't going to come see about her again. So, you know, even when it came to like, you know, like um, following orders, because this wasn't slavery. So they would have a uh, master, but, you know, people were sharecropping at this time. So the sharecroppers was, um, you know, they living on the land. They living on master land or whatever. And in return, you know, he let them do a little farming and, you know, stuff like that. So. They didn't like the way Bella would be, um, you know, always fighting and, and getting into it with Matt and talking back. Because at this time, you know, people just trying to make it through, man. You know, they like, hey, he letting us stay here. So, you know, keep your mouth shut so we'll have us a place to stay. But Bella, she just won that type, man. She just won the type that was going to go for that. So in her mind, you know, she had to fight. So. A lot of the time, like, this was getting the family in trouble, man. This is getting the family, um, this is getting the family knocked up off, you know, not, like, on the bad side. Because what was happening with the sharecropping thing, like, okay, you'll do your, you know, you'll go plant your turn, master, let you stay on the land. What up, T? How you doing? Yeah, that's a picture of her. That's, um. You know, it ain't many pictures of her, but that's one of them. So when you were sharecropping, one of the, you know, the one of the little trade-offs was, oh, the bad part about it was that master could do, not I keep saying master, but the owner, the land owner could do whatever he want. He could charge you whatever he want. You know, when you did your work for the day, he could say all your work was short. And tell you, you know, you only made X amount, even though you know you made more than that. And, you know, was nothing you could do because, hey, you staying on his land. So if you staying on his land, you know, you trying to, you know, you trying to have you a place to stay. So most people, you know, they weren't really finna, you know, they weren't really finna buck. If he say, oh, you only made so much, then, you know, hey, they just went on. And went with it. Because, you know, like, let's say if you was picking cotton or whatever, you would have had a sack. And you would fill that sack up. And once you filled it up, you would take it to the boss man. And when you take that sack, the boss man, you know, he going to, um, you know, he going to either say, like, like, yeah, you know, good job. That's a fool. <clears throat> good job. Or he just going to say, like, oh, no, nah, you ain't doing enough. You need to do some more. And if that's what he did, shoot, it wasn't nothing you could do about it. Like, the only thing you could do is go and uh, put some more stuff in that sack. So, 
the little trick they would do was they would take the sack and they would like beat it, beat it down. Like whatever was in there, they'd like smash it down. So it'll be, you know, that was like their way of saying like, nah, you can get some more stuff in there. So people was literally like filling them bags up. They fill up like five bags a day, 200 pounds of cotton in a day. You know, like, it just a matter, bro, that's a lot. Like, 200 pounds of cotton? You know how light cotton is? So, you know, that's a whole lot of cotton, bro. They was doing 200 pounds of cotton in a day, man. So, uh, that's some serious work, man. But that's what it took. You know, that's what they had to do to uh, stay out of Dodge, man. That's what they had to do. Now, Bella, she, um... One of the 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 land owners kids and he always was coming at Bella, man. Yeah, she looked like the Hulk, man. This lady is this lady strong. Boy, they don't make him like this no more. <laughs> like, bro, they don't, you know, old black women were some of the biggest, strongest women walking around, but you know, especially back in them days, so you don't see women like this no more. They do when they be on their stuff, but even the ones on their stuff don't be this big. Yeah, even the ones who on their stuff don't get this big, man. This a whole different level of muscle right here, boy. This is a whole different thing. So, but that's how Bella was, man. Bella was just a a walking tank, man. So, you know, the boy he always, you know, say little smart stuff to her. Now, at this time, she was like, you know, she was like 16, you know, 16, something like that. So she wasn't as hot-headed as she was back in the day. So she had kind of let it slide. But the boy, when she let it slide, he, instead of him just saying, okay, she could just break you in half, but she trying to, you know, she trying to get you a pass, man. Instead of him just taking advantage of that, he got to keep on pushing it. Keep on pushing it. Keep on pushing it. So now, eventually, we all know what happened. Miss Bella snapped. You know, she snapped, man. <laughs> and I'm talking about when she snapped, she snapped him. She grabbed hold of him. And uh, with a little flick of her wrist, she she put some, some serious damage on that boy. And uh, he ain't never walked straight again. Like, you know, he didn't. He never walked it. He was able to walk, but he never walked it straight after that, man. He always, uh, he always had a little reminder, man. You know, she gave yeah, that's all she do. She gave him a little, a little reminder for him to just remember, uh, you know, remember what happened, man. So, of course, when uh, the boss man found out, you know, he was beyond mad, but. He kind of, it was, you know, this is how money hungry some of these folks was. And it's still like this today, man. It ain't just, I ain't, this ain't just no old stuff. It's still like that today. People are so money hungry that they will let, like, they uh, let something like that go. Like, that's how, you know, he was so, because he, Bella was making good money. Because Bella was able to do all kind of stuff around you know, around um, the far- the farms and around the plantation, man, she was able to do stuff that a lot of people couldn't do. You know, she was able to lift up stuff. You ain't have to, like, this lady could outwork a goddamn mule, man. <laughs> like, she could outwork the donkeys and stuff, man. So, you know, he wasn't in no rush to, uh, you know, he just wasn't in no rush to get rid of her because, Sue, she was really, you know, she was making him a whole lot of money, man. So, you know, he actually let it slide and just gave her a warning. Now, when he gave her a warning, Bella ain't say nothing to him. She just stared at him and and went on back to what she was doing. And, you know, he walked off and uh, he knew he just had to do it. He had to do something, you know. So he had to go down there and make it look like he was going to tell her, you know, give her what for or whatever. But, you know, it was just part of him. you know, it was just part of him just trying to maintain, you know, the uh, 
just maintain the, you know, how, how when you when you a uh, boss, you know, you gotta act like you are, uh, you know, running around running things, man. But everybody already knew that he was terrified because anytime a black woman could do something like that <laughs> and get away with it, everybody already knew, you know, what what it really was, man. So, you know, Bella. Um, and she carried on and just, you know, doing her thing, man. Now, as time went, as time went, you know, now she like getting close to 18. And uh, she getting close to 18. And, uh, you know, she wanted to find somebody to, you know, be with. Now, like I say, Bella, she might have looked at like uh she might have looked at like the hope, but she was just a normal lady, man. You know, she wanted somebody to love. She wanted somebody to do her right. And uh, it was hard for her because a lot of the men's is, they was, um, you know, a lot of the men's is was, uh, they was scared of her, you know, girl, shoot, you know, like me. Hey, man, you know, I like a woman that could, uh, that could fight back and, and, and throw me around a little bit and kick my butt, man. But, you know, at the same time, you know, <laughs> this back in the day, back in the day, you know, most guys was like, you know, had to be on their macho man type stuff, you know, so they couldn't have no woman, you know, like running stuff, man. You know, you can't have no woman picking up, you know, y'all y'all got some, you got, got some wood to move and she go down there and you sitting there chopping the tree. Next thing you know, she walk up and knock the tree down with her bare hands and rip the wood apart. You know, you can't have no woman show you up like that. So, you know, so a lot of the guys, you know, they, they, it was guys that liked her, huh? but they just had to, you know, they just had to, couldn't, they was ashamed to make it known. So, you know, Bella, she, like, she knew that, like, she wasn't no dummy. You know, she wasn't no dummy. She might have been, you know, she might have, you know, she might have looked at like she was, uh, you know, she might have looked like she was just a big muscle head, but I'm telling you, this woman was, this woman was smart, man. This woman was smart. So, it was one guy that she really liked, and he was a scrawny guy, man. Just, you, you know, I I think she liked him because, you know, even though like he wasn't like the other guys trying to like show that they were strong and show that they could keep up with her and show that um. Uh, and try to talk, you know, guys to be making fun of on the low, not to her face, now, you know, like, I ain't talking about to her face, bro, when they could get a chance, you know, people be trying to make fun of her, oh, yeah, y'all, let me know if the sound and stuff is good, hey, y'all, please do, let me know if the sound is good, you know, let me, just let me know if everything is okay. Let me see, cause my my computer lagging a bit. Computer lagging a bit. Bro, what the? Okay. Yeah, did I lose y'all? Everything good? Y'all still can hear me? I hope so. Is we back? Is we back? Yeah, man. It's always, it's always got to be something with this thing, man. All right, it's good now. Everything clear. Let me know something before I get back into it. I just want to make sure that um that we good before I get back to. Okay, we good now. All right, let me get my screen pulled back up. Let me get that picture of her pulled back up. So, hey man, y'all, who would y'all who would have shot that man? No. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, okay, let me get that picture back up so we back in here. 
I was too much on my computer at one time, man. That's, you know, I'm trying to do too much. I'm trying to keep all this stuff. All these just laugh, man. I got to have these windows and stuff open. So, so I'm just trying to keep everything. Ooh, we should be pretty smooth now. So let me pick Bella up. Where you at, Bella, baby? I see you. Yeah, I shot my shot, boy. I know I would have. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I didn't have to go for it. What's the worst she gonna do? But now nah, she was acting like I say, man. She was normal, man. She wasn't no, you know, she wasn't no monster, man. She was just a normal girl, just a normal girl, just uh, bigger than everybody else. <laughs> That's all. She's a normal girl, just bigger than everybody else. So. The guy she liked, you know, a little scrawny guy, man, and um, and he was kind of timid, but he had confidence, and you know that when you got confidence, man, confidence take you a long way. Like people think is, you know, how you look or how much money you got or truth, you know, all that stuff play into it, man. But well, if you got confidence, though, you probably weren't supposed to get uh, bulk flocks. Boke Flox, Bo, he say, uh, hood, what up? Dog, I like your stories and chilling tales. Got me through some, hey, man, you know, if, if if I'm able to get y'all through some rough times, man, that's, that's why I do what I do. So whenever folk tell me that, man, you know, I, I appreciate it, man. It let me know that I'm doing something. So even if I only touch one and, um, and, and make a difference, then shoot, yeah, what it is. Happy to do it. That's my TikTok page, man, for y'all who, uh, you know, for y'all that uh, that's into that type of stuff. That's even me. Cause I got some time. I got some crazy good stories on TikTok, man. Crazy good. So, you know, if you want to uh, see some of those, go on TikTok, man. Go on the TikTok. But yeah, man. Uh. So now Bella, um, you know, the guy, he, you know, he was, um, you know, he is okay. So it's, it's crazy how as strong as a woman can be, the right man can still break her down. Now, Bella, I'm talking about as bad as she was, like so bad that even white men's is one mess with. This guy, like, was able to just, he didn't, like, abuse her just fully, but he just kept her, like, you know, he just kept her, like, kind of, like, he played little mind games on her. And it wasn't enough to just completely destroy her, but it was just enough to kind of keep her wanting, you know. It was like, um, just imagine, like, a drug dealer. And, uh, you know, you going, you trying to get that good old crack rock, man, but he won't give you the whole crack rock. He just give you like a little powder. Hey, you want the whole, you want the rock, man. He just keep giving you the powder, man. you like, man, I want that rock. <laughs> you know, that's what it was like. It was like he just had a way, and maybe he wasn't necessarily doing it on purpose. Maybe it was just part of his character or part of his personality. But, you know, the result's still the same, man. So, Bella was, you know, falling for him, fell for him, and she was just confused. And she wanted to try to, um, you know, she wanted to try to make sense of it. it but, you know, I'm guessing since it was like her first relationship and the hormones and stuff probably was just taking over, that she just didn't really know how to control herself, man. You see this a lot, man, you know. You see this because her relationship with her daddy wasn't good. Her relationship with her mama wasn't all that good either because her daddy didn't like it because, he, you know, every time she get in trouble, they have to pay, you know, the uh, boss man, a, a landowner, would put more pressure on them as far as how much they was paying a month. So 
whenever she get to acting a fool, now it's like, okay, I ain't going to do nothing about it because I'm scared of her. But, you know, I am going to charge y'all a little extra this month. Or I'm going to short, I'm a short y'all on y'all when y'all turn your stuff in. You know, I'm going to knock a few pounds off. You know, just, you know, so he was hurting because of it. And he already, you know, back then. And these people, you got to think about, man, this old lady a couple months ago, and she was talking about back in the day working on the plantation. She say they work seven days a week. They work to the point sometimes, especially like during the harvest seasons and the, the plant, you know, because you got certain seasons where you got to plant and where you got to pick up the, the harvest and stuff. So they say during that times, they working seven days a week. They working to the point that unless they was just praying for rain. Like they literally, you know, like to us, rain ain't that big a deal. Like, you know, it's just part of whatever. But to them, rain was like a, a holiday, man. And that made so much sense because uh, I realized whenever it rained, my granddaddy always go stand at the top of the steps. It's, it's like a window above the steps. And he'll just stare at the, stare out the, um, out up on top of the door. There's a window on top of the door. And he would just stare out that window out the front door and just stare at the rain. Because it reminded, I guess it reminded him of back in the day, they'd be happy to see the rain because it meant we got a day off. So her daddy was just at like a breaking point, man. Like he was just woe down, toe down to the flow down, man. Excuse me. Yeah, so he was uh I ain't mean to burp like that. <laughs> my bad. Why well, be getting so comfortable with y'all, man? I'll be forgetting like I'm on you know, I get so goddamn comfortable, boy. So he uh so she went close with her pops, so she didn't really know like what to look for in a man, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, she didn't know, you know, he never really took the time to sit with her and talk about it. And her mama was just kind of so timid and, you know, man, these people was tired, man. These people was woe out, man. You know, they had so many kids, you know, you talking about back when people had 10, 15 kids and stuff. And um, it was just a lot on their plate, man. So, you know, it ain't necessarily that they was bad people or they didn't care to do it or whatever. But, you know, when you got that much stuff going on, working that many hours, that many people in the household got to eat, just get lost in the sauce, man. You know, it's been times where, you know, I might have babysitted for, um, you know, mom. I got some guy kids and we babysitted and stuff. And, uh, you know, you get to the point where it's soon. You can't give everybody the attention they need. You know, she got, uh, let me see how many kids, three, four, five, six. She got six kids. So when they come over, plus my kid, shoot, you got seven kids in the house. So everybody ain't finna get the attention and the love and the, the stuff they need. You know, you, you know, shoot, I, you know you, people say that that's crazy, but... Unless you've been there, man, so you got to pick and choose your battles. You got to say, oh, well, so-and-so be okay right now. Let me go get them, man. Like, now they cool. Let me go back to so-and-so. <laughs> like, so you got to just do the best you can, man. So, um, she, a lot of stuff she just didn't learn. So, you know, this guy uh, got to a point where he started, you know, now he start after a while. He started getting to the point where he wasn't coming uh, coming back to the uh, plantation. Now she was still staying on the plantation at this point. She hadn't went like into seclusion yet. She was still staying on the uh, on the family land and all that. So while she um uh, be there working on what sun go down, then he'd be like, "Oh, I gotta go into town." And he'd go into town, and he wouldn't come back till the next morning. And that kind of stuff. So it didn't take too many times for her to say, like, okay, man, something going on, and you better come clean and tell me what it is because, you know, don't don't hurt me. Don't take advantage of me. 
So now Bella started coming to her senses. And, uh, but the guy just, you know, told her how I got caught up and so-and-so asked me to do a little work for him and I went and did it. And, uh, but see the thing about it, I remember I was driving bus, man. And this guy told me, he was like, he told his friend, um, let me, what did, how does it go? Like, it was like, he was like, when I want to cheat on my, when I want to, I, he'd be like openly talking to me about cheating on his, I'm guessing wife, because the guy was like 50 some years old. So I'm guessing he was married at this time. Now, maybe he was talking about a girlfriend, but I'm pretty sure it was his wife. This has been years ago, so I can't remember all the details. But he would talk about how if he needed to tell his yeah, when he wanted to go do like go out and cheat or go out with another woman, he was like, "It's only so many times I can say." Like he got mad at his little side piece because he didn't told his wife his friend car broke down. Then he telling her, and then when so when he told her his wife that to go meet her with the side piece, I guess the side piece canceled on him. And he like, you know, it's only so many times. I can tell my wife that my friend car broke down, <laughs> you know. I can't keep coming up with these same excuses before she start, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. So when I didn't use these, then we better take advantage of them. Yeah, he's just be telling me, and I'm, you know, I'm listening, looking at him like, yeah, whatever, man. Just one of them old, you know, one of them old types of guys, man. I think they're junk cool, you know, bragging about cheating on your wife, but whatever, man. So... <sighs> Um, so now he's, this guy hadn't been taught that it's only so many times you can use those excuses. So he went a couple of times and used these excuses, but that junk caught up to him quick, you know, and only so many times because, you know, if you're going to tell her, I got caught up downtown and, uh, and so-and-so needed me to do a little work for him. But then, all right, where the money at? <laughs> so, you know, you said you done went off and go do some work, but I don't see no money. So that's where the problem came in. And y'all hit the like button. If you're in here, just, you know, just for me, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep this going, man. I need, need y'all help. So like free. If you can't hit the cash app, that's fine. But you can hit the like button. There's one little poke of the button. And you, uh, all right, no more work. <laughs> you, you cool. So, um, yeah. So, and I hope this is entertaining, man. I hope that this is uh enough to keep y'all attention, man. I hope that I'm not that I'm not boring y'all, man. I hope that the story is uh, I hope that the story is entertaining. I hope that the story is. Uh, keeping y'all attention the best I can and make it exciting, man. You know? So, so now Bella said, I'm going to follow him in town one night. So, you know, when you, when you go to town, like it ain't much in town, you know what I'm saying? So, so they finish their work. And he said he finna head into town and pick up some next day for the over the weekend or whatever it was. I'm gonna go pick up some stuff and uh I'll be back and I'm probably gonna end up working with so and so again. <laughs> so, you know, I they ain't got no phones, but you know, I guess he figured she wasn't finna walk all the way or travel all the way to the town just to, you know, see was he telling the truth or not. But she messed around and made that journey. I don't know if she got on the horse or down, whatever she had to do. Maybe she caught a ride with somebody shooting on an angry black woman. She probably walked. <laughs> she probably walked all the way, man. So uh, she go to, you know, the people who, the guy who she, he always would say he was doing the work for. She went over there and he wasn't nowhere to be found. And she asked the guy, hey, you know, has he been coming around here to work lately? And the guy said, no, nah, he ain't came over here to work. And I ain't, he ain't came over here to work ever. Like, no, nah, we don't uh -uh. One time he came, blah, blah, blah. But no, nah, he don't be over here like that. 
Mickey Casper, I want to hear you add more natural narration, but it couldn't be a game changer if you add some over the top. Oh, I know what you're saying. Mickey's saying if I added some uh, like sound effects and that type of thing. Yeah, man, Um, I would like to. If I did that kind of thing, though, know, I would only be able to release stories every now and then. But maybe it's better to do an extremely high-quality story every now and then versus um versus some uh you know like a bunch of stories so what would be better a bunch of stories or a few very high quality stories that's the problem man it's hard social media wants you constantly pumping out these apps want you constantly pumping out content but maybe that's what i will do for youtube maybe i'll just do the constant stuff on tiktok and on youtube i'll just do you know the the uh the more high quality things you know, more dramatic and that type of thing. I'm gonna think about that. So she um didn't. So the guy wasn't at the house. So the next thing she did, she headed into town and went to the little jerk joints. So you know, little jerk joints is just like a little club or whatever. Where they in the, you know, drinking, doing their thing or whatever. So she go up in the jerk joint, and this man standing all up on top of the bar with two or three different women. And they all all over him, and he drinking, and uh, Bella went in there, and they say she grabbed him, you know, like <laughs> she grabbed him by like on the top of the head. She grabbed him, and uh, he said, "Get a soundboard." Yeah, I probably could do that. I never thought about that. A soundboard that might mess up. That might work. That might work, man. I have, yeah, that might work. I'm going to look into that. That might work, man. That might work. That might be a good idea right there. So, uh, she grabbed him by the top of the head and pulled him and pulled him out of there. And they said, look on his face. They said it had been like you to think that God, God came up in there and grabbed that man. He was completely sh- he was toe up from the flow up. Like he knew he messed it up. Like there's a lot of times, a lot of mistakes that a man has made in his life, but he knew that was one that he wasn't going to recover from. He knew he messed up bad this time, boy. So, you know, Bella carried him up out there, threw him on, uh, you know, the horse or whatever they did to get into town, threw him on the horse and carried him back. And the whole way, he just crying, begging, pleading, uh, Bella, baby, please. You know, uh, I just stopped by. I was coming from work, <laughs> and I just stopped the joint just to see what was going on. And uh, it ain't what it looked like. You know, it's just all the little stuff to keep him up out of trouble, man. You know you know how uh, us men just do. We, we ain't going down. We ain't going down easy now. You know, we got to. We got to try to save ourselves. <laughs> you know, we just for the... Yes, babe, you caught me. I was cheating with those women. I deserve a full punishment. <laughs> no, nah, uh-uh. Ain't going to be none of that. We finna fight. We going to fight, shoot. I, man, I can get caught. I can get caught at a bar with 10 women and... And we all dancing, boogie, and I'm throwing money. And my woman walk up on me. I'm still going to lie. I'm going to lie. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's, no, it wasn't. Wes, I say, I'm looking at you. No, you're not. I'm not. No, I'm not, Wes. I'm, 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 I'm hood whore. I'm not. I'm, who is this? Who is me? My name's, my name's Chuck. <laughs> I'll start talking proper and all. Oh, my name's Chuck, okay? Shoot, I, man, I do whatever I can to get out of that trouble, boy. I ain't trying to take that up. Shoot, you ain't trying to deal with that, boy. I knew the lady one time, man. She, they, she, they just getting, you know, they, they been talking and stuff, and uh, they move in, and they hadn't even been talking long, man. But the guy, he was like fifty, you know, fifty some years old, and she in her twenties. So you know, he just lost his mind with her, man. So he moved her in. And, uh, you know, it ain't take long. 
It didn't take long for him to mess around, and she was got to going through his stuff because he got to going through her stuff because he paranoid because he know that she too fine to be you know with somebody like him, even though he supposed to have a little money or whatever. So she um he get to going through her stuff, asking her questions and stuff. He ain't really find nothing too too incriminating, but you know just a little text messages, who is this and all that. So she gets to going through his stuff. And see, he had a second phone, but he was texting, um, you know, women that uh, do stuff for you. So she freak out, man. She go and smash his computer, throw all the stuff on, on the front lawn. Like, I ain't talking about, like, you know, usually mothers throw your clothes in the front lawn. This girl was throwing computers, his, his uh, freaking desk stuff, all his work, little office stuff. I'm drinking that water with the apple cider vinegar, boy. Growing out pictures of his family he had. And this is his spot. No, this ain't her spot. No, they spot. This is his spot. She in there throwing all kinds of stuff out. So, you know, pour through his pills out. Um, Everything she can get her hands on. Spray, like, yeah, cleaning spray. She sprayed the cleaning spray all over. Poured it all out. Just whatever she could do to damage his stuff, man. And uh, so, you know, that's why certain women were, you know, you got to watch who you get to, you know, certain women, they can't handle no adversity. Boy. Just the little slightest taste of adversity, just throw them all off, boy. So, <sighs> Bella was one of those women. <laughs> now, it was wrong what he did, man. That was a lot. I'm not saying she should have just took that on the chin, but uh, he took it on the chin, though. So, she dragged him up out of that, got him to the crib. And took him out to the barn. Now, here is where the story gets scary because some people say that when they got to that barn, that Bella took a, a leather strap, like I guess from one of the horse saddles or something, and whipped him like he was her child. I'm talking about like grabbed him by the leg, held him upside down, and just, and just, whoa, I'm talking about whoa him out. For about an hour till her arms got tired. <laughs> that's what they that's what some people say. Now other people say that uh that she just snapped him like a twig, you know, on the round arm and legs and you know so which one is true, I, I really can't say. If if you do that, like if you had a black woman do that to a black man at that time. He going to do his best to keep it under wraps because he don't want nobody to know that he got whooped by a woman. And then if he went to the law, like, you know, the law don't care if two chocolate folk hurt each other. You know, they didn't. That's that's the last thing. Uh, yeah, that's the last thing you're going to get them moving, man. And, you know, plus maybe the guy didn't really even have no family. Anybody cared for him anyway. So, but again, like I say, if Bella do something, it just got dead, all right? If Bella do something to you, you just got something done to you. It ain't really much, uh, you know, it ain't really much you can do about that. You just got to do what it is. Stay on her good side. Now, but it turns out that this guy, had he did have a special skill. So when that's why she kind of believes him when he said that he was um going to that other guy house doing that work. Cause I think he was like had like a blacksmith skill or something, you know. That's like the people that could make stuff out of iron or whatever. So you know he was like a blacksmith or something. So you know he did have some. Uh, he did have some talent. Now the guy who where she lived, when he found out that she didn't kind of basically like cripple this guy. And he come getting mad at Bella and him again. So you're like, okay, this is the last straw, Bella. Like, you can't just be up here just whooping up on everybody. You can't just be sitting here beating mugs down to the ground. And, and, and uh, you know, you hurt my business. All right? <laughs> you hurt my business. So instead of Bella, you know, instead of her just, you know, apologizing or something like that, she hauls off 
and slapped him. And they say she slapped him so hard that his head turned around to the back. That's what they say. They say she hit him and his head spun around like the um, exorcism or something. Like the exorcist. That's how hard she slapped at this man. So, she had to go on the run. <laughs> she had to go on the run at this point. <laughs> This is her, her handprint was on his face for about two, three months. It took two or three months for his, for his face to uh, get back to normal after that. So she had to go into like uh, seclusion. So she went in, uh, got her own, got her a little spot off in the woods somewhere where it was just her. You know, it was just her and, uh, you know, a little cabin or something. She must have came and she fixed it up. It was like a little barn, a cabin or something. And she, you know, fixed it up, you know, put a little locks on the doors and uh, just was in hide, man. Just was in hide. So she will leave out and uh, go get some food or whatever the case that was. And uh, until she got her own little garden going. So, um, and nobody messed with it. Like, you know, the, the black folk who knew, you know, they kind of kept it on the low because nobody wanted to be known as the one that told on her. You know, man, people, see, people back at this time was real superstitious, man. You know, people was real superstitious at this time, you know. So they didn't believe that Bella was just, you know, normal. They believed that, you know, it was some crazy rumors going around. It was some rumors was going around that you know her um that her mama slept with an angel and that's why you know bella came out even though her you know like i say her whole family was kind of cock diesel but it was just that she was on a uh, you know she was just on a whole nother level of it but you know the whole family was like cock diesel man so it was um it wasn't you know it was uh, but they say that's why, because they had, you know, the mama slept with an angel. And then it was people saying that it was a voodoo and it was a spell, it was some witchcraft. And they was trying to create the ultimate worker. <coughs> and that's how she was created. Then people were saying she was the child of the devil. You know, because ain't nobody supposed to be like that. She's some kind of heathen and... You know, so, yeah, man, there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of different stuff surrounding her, man. But, hey, she was, you know, she went on in the seclusion. And, uh, you know, it didn't really bother her. You know, it didn't really bother her much because the way she looked at it, it was, uh, she kind of knew it was coming. Like I say, she was smart. So she kind of already knew, like, that the day was coming where I'm going to have to, um, um, you know, I'm probably live away from uh, everyone else, man. <laughs> you know, hey, when you when you crazy, man, you know what I'm saying? When you crazy and you stay in the trouble, you already know uh, Mr. Granger. What's up, man? I ain't seen you in a minute. But yeah, when you crazy, man, you already know. You know, you know it's only so long before you... uh. Before you get into some serious trouble, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, you already know sooner or later you're going to do something to really, really tick somebody off. So she already knew, like, that her days was coming, man. She knew it was only so many times that boss man was going to, you know, just threaten her and let her walk away, un, you know, just cool. He knew sooner or later he going to have to do something. So I appreciate y'all that came in here and hit the like button so far, man, you know. I appreciate that, man. That's that, that. Let me know that um I got people that support me, man. I appreciate y'all. I think somebody just hit the cash app. Let me see. I think somebody just hit the cash app. Oh, okay. Man, we got a $20 donation. And they said anonymous. Okay, so I guess... Well, anonymous, I appreciate you. All right, I ain't gonna, you know, it do show like yo, but I ain't gonna put you. You know, some people don't want their business out there, so I ain't gonna put it out there. 
I ain't gonna, but I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. That's why I do what I do. I know y'all appreciate me. I appreciate y'all. And um, y'all just follow me on the TikTok, man. Let me put the link to the TikTok up just in case. You know, you ain't never seen it, but that's the link to the TikTok. Halloween in the hood or hood urban legends. That's how you get to the TikTok. So, carrying on. And I'm going to go, I'm at 45 minutes, so I'm probably going to go till I get to an hour. And I try to come on here for an hour every night, maybe sometime during the day, man, and just just give y'all some stories, man. So if y'all if y'all like it, just do what you can to support, and I'll keep it going. So when word got out where Bella was staying, and of course word got out because her own people <laughs> let the word get out. You know, it's always your own people, man. Mess around, somebody went and told, you know, thinking they're going to get some brownie points or get some extra little, you know, and maybe they gave them a couple of dollars off they, they ran or whatever, but hey, you know. That they going to come where you do something wrong. And you better hope don't nobody snitch on you. <laughs> So, they came for Bella, but they didn't know that Bella was already prepared for this day. So, she had put, like, um, little trip lines, like, little lines all around the place with, like, bells. So, if you was coming and you hit one of these little trip lines once you got on the perimeter, it would, you know, the bells would ring and let her know that you was, um, in the vicinity, man. So, once the alert bells went off, she got on alert. Now, she would, um, had like a, a battle suit. It was like, she took like scrap metal and pieces of uh, like metal and stuff. Cause, you know, back in the day, they didn't have bulletproof vests, but they would take like armor plates and, um, put it across their chest and stuff. So, she put on armor plates across her chest and back. And, you know, her vital parts and all that. And uh, she'd be ready for war. <laughs> and you were, in this particular time, the first time they came, it was nighttime. So she started running these guys. Bella was fast, boy. I'm talking about she started running these guys down like the Terminator. So, you know, they kind of like all split up to circle around her. So she started picking them off one by one, like on some Rambo type junk. So she had the armor on. So when they would shoot at her, they'd see her coming and pow, they'd pop one at her. And it had, you know, hit the armor and she'd keep going. But now since it was dark, they didn't necessarily really understand that she had the armor on. <laughs> so they was thinking like, they was thinking like, this guy dang lady, invincible, man, like. It is true. She is the daughter of an angel or the daughter of a devil, one of them, because we shot her, and she still kept coming. Now, she was smart enough to not kill the guys, but she did enough to them where they uh, would remember. <laughs> they would remember her. You know, then she would make sure that uh, some parts of their body never was straightened out again. That's all she did. She, you know, she would grab you. And just take her time and wrench on you, twist her, twist you up real good. And uh, she just twisted. She hit that snap she wanted to hear. And once she heard that crushing noise, you know, then once the, she hit that bone crush, then she'll finally, you know, then she'd be satisfied. So she ain't want to, you know, she ain't want to take you all the way out. Just want to do enough where you, you know, just enough where you remember, you know. And like, hey, you have a little cut or some little bruise. You don't remember that, but. If that arm hanging off, <laughs> that arm hanging all different for the rest, you're going to remember why that arm hanging. You might not remember that who gave you that black eye or whatever back in the day, but you remember that arm. You Every time you take a step and it rain and your bones get aching, shoot, you remember who did that to you. So now this was helped her because, because since they were shooting her and it didn't affect her, this was um it helped her 
to the point where they wouldn't mess with her no more. Like, people was legit scared, so it was a bounty on her head. I'm not sure how much the bounty was for. You know, I I, I, ain't, I ain't sure. You know, I try to I try to figure out how much it was for, but, you know, it wasn't like no American well-known bounty, like America's Most Wanted type stuff, but, you know, just enough to get the little local boys, you know, considering should they, uh, you know, who they, they ain't got nothing else to do and, Wonder would it be worth it to go collect the bounty on old Bella? <laughs> so I don't know how much it was, but oh, uh, here go Mister Grandeur. Hey, he come with the <laughs> hey boy. You better be careful. You know they say Bella got some got some daughters out there somewhere. Got some great 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 granddaughters out there somewhere. You better be careful now. <laughs> they might be, you know, they might be in the chat somewhere. You might want to, you know, I'm just saying. Somebody had to pass this story on to me, so you might want to watch out. If they uh they still around, they they might not like you talking about their grandma like that. <laughs> so they um uh, they wouldn't come back and mess with her after this. After this. The legend got around that Bella was invincible. She was like a uh, unkillable. You know, this is when they had the tanks kind of, you know, they started having tanks during World War One, if I ain't mistaken. I believe World War One was the first war where they had tanks. And, um, you know, they was like, they was, <laughs> these are respect. Yeah, <laughs> don't, be, don't be trying to be respectful now. Uh, what's her granddaughter's name? Her granddaughter's name, Beliqua. Beliqua Bonecrusher. Miss Beliqua done already sent you. <laughs> Boy, I'd be scared to death if I got a message from somebody saying, I'm Bella Bonecrusher, great, great, great granddaughter. Man, I want to meet up with you, hood. I'd be scared to death. <laughs> uh, nah, I ain't meeting up with you. Where you want to meet at? We meet at Walmart, or police station or something. I hope that's what you're talking about. Is you mad? Is you okay? Is we cool? Let me know something first before we meet. But yeah, you know, everybody figured that she was some kind of, you know, some kind of monster, some kind of, you know, supernatural being. So they left her alone. Now, as time went, the guy that put the bounty on him, he passed on. So when he passed on, like the bounty fell off, you know what I'm saying? Like, at this point, it was like, well, shoot, uh, you know, he was the one going to pay the bounty. So, but now he gone, and, uh, you know, now he gone, so I guess the bounty gone, too. So, you know, uh, Bella was free. She was free. So, at this time, she's still, like, in her early 20s. And, um, you know, she's still in her early 20s. Because they say how she slapped that guy. He never was right again. Like she slapped his nerves out of his nervous system. So he never, you know, he just never got back right after that, man. He always was twitching and, and jerking around. You know how like on on Friday after next when he slapped his mama and said, it tastes so good, make you want to slap your mama. And after that, the, the mama be jumping every time somebody say something or come next to her. So, yeah, you know, she just never, he just, she just never was, he never was right after all. Uh, after she smacked it, the taste of Papa's mouth or whatever. So um, that's why I'm gonna leave this story for today. That's a that's a nice little chunk right there, man. Shoot, that's enough. Uh, that should be enough to just you know just to keep y'all a little, keep y'all a little interested and keep you coming back. You know, that should be enough to uh, just keep y'all like you know. Keep y'all, just keep y'all coming back, man. So, look, now we got nine people in here when I get ready to get out. So, look, you know, for y'all that missed it, man, just just run it back and hit the like button, please, man. But just run it back, man. This was a good episode right here. I try to do some, you know, this creepy, spooky season time, holiday season. So, <clears throat> I try to do some all through this holiday season. And um, if y'all support, man, through the cash app, through the like button, I'll keep doing what I'm doing. 
And y'all follow the, you know, check the TikTok page out, man, because the TikTok page, I put stuff out on there almost every day, man. So, and then all the stories go to TikTok first. So, y'all check out the TikTok, man. Help me, you know, I got like 170,000 followers on there. So, I need y'all support, man. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Hope y'all enjoy it. See y'all tomorrow.